The Earth is covered with more than 50 million square miles of soil. Spread over the entire surface of the planet, this forms an incredibly thin layer between the bedrock and surface. Most plant and animal life depends on this thin layer for their existence. It's vitally important. This program concerns protecting that resource. It's about saving the soil. What's this all about, anyway? It's about dirt or something. It's not about dirt, it's about soil conservation. Dirt. Well, why do we need to conserve soil? I mean, Christopher has an up on him over there. <laughs> hey, hey, all right, now listen, listen. Today we're going to talk about soil conservation. Now, now this is a really important subject because um, we have to conserve the soil uh, because, uh, well, we need to have more for later. And uh, with soil, we can, we can grow things and, uh, and well, soil is, is just good. Any questions? Yes. Why do we need to conserve soil? I mean, isn't there just more underneath? Good question. Good. Uh, who wants to answer that? Yes? Well, don't leaves and stuff rot to make more dirt? Right, right. Leaves decay, and that makes more soil, which is, is good, because soil is, uh, well, we need, well, uh, let's watch the movie. Carrie, how are you? How's the sixth grade treating you? Well, it's not too bad. We're uh, studying soil conservation. I know. I was walking by your class the other day, and I and, couldn't... And uh, pretty much of a disaster, huh? Well, soil conservation is important. Well, but is it? I mean, we've got drugs and violence and wars. I wish we could at least study some sort of environmental issue instead of this farm stuff. It is an environmental issue. I... Look at the stuff in your cart. Where do you think that comes from? I guess the store would be the wrong answer. Apples grow on trees, which come from the soil. Uh, corn chips. Corn grows in the soil. Milk. Cows eat grass. Come from the soil. Who knows? The point is, everything, the food we eat, even the air we breathe, has its roots in the soil. Wait a minute, the air? Air comes from photosynthesis in plants, which grow in soil. It's the most important environmental issue. Soil conservation is about saving the earth, literally. Hey, what are you doing this afternoon? Well, hopefully not getting incarcerated by the soil police. Come on, it'll be fun. I have got this friend. He's a soil scientist. You need to meet him. Your class definitely needs you to meet him. We get no respect. Yeah, if they're talking about soil, they need to talk about us. We make it. Live in it. Give it air. Give it life. People don't know nothing about worms. Like how we're both male and female at the same time. I'm still not sure I get that. We'll talk. Hey, John. Hey, Carrie. How's it going? Great. Jeff here and I were just talking about soil, and I thought of you. Well, thanks, I think. Yeah, Carrie was just giving me the lowdown on dirt, so what's the big deal? Well, first of all, we don't call it dirt. It's soil, and it is a big deal. This is the earth, right? The earth is three parts water. That leaves one quarter dry land. Now, half of that is either desert or ice covered or mountains. This is the part man lives on. This part here is too rocky. This part, too wet. And this part we sort of just paved over. That leaves this for food production. Now the top layer is a very thin layer of soil. So this is what we're starting with to produce all the food in the world. Only 11% of the Earth's surface is good, high quality farmland. It's a rare and valuable commodity, and that's why it's important. I got some friends and a field crew I want you guys to meet. Oh, let's that would be great! Do we get to get dirty? Of course! All right! Let's go! Is that your field crew? I don't think so. Whatever it is, we better check it out. Hey. Oh, hey! What's going on in there? Hey, what? 
Oh, mind the edge now, laddies. Don't want her crumbling in. Oh, yeah, right. What are you doing? Digging me a well. A source of pure sweet water is what I'm doing. Oh, don't they have a machine or a drill or something for that nowadays? Ah, that's for these haggis breath waste of space who always do things the easy way. But me? No, sir. McTavish does it the right way. My daddy's oh, way. Oh, yeah, and this guy's in touch. <laughs> hey, we got a guy up here who wants a little information about the earth. Aye, laddie, the soil, the warm, sweet earth. Mother of grain, haven for the worm. I send him down. I know a no, thing or two no. about the soil. You guys, you guys, I knew this was going to be trouble. Okay, now, the soil's a complex thing, but it's orderly. It's not just a jumble of mixed up dirt. There's reason to it. It's stretched out in layers called horizons. I wish I could see the horizon. Oh, you can, laddie, the soil horizons. Now, down here is the sea horizon. It sits right on top of the bedrock. It's made of rock or pieces of rock. Big chunks of the stuff laying over the bedrock. Of course, it's here that the stuff that gets mined is the lead, coal, iron, and zinc. When they call them hard rock miners, they're not kidding. Going up from the sea horizon is the subsoil, or the bee horizon. It gets its stuffing from the rocks and minerals that move up from below and dissolved organic matter that seeps down from above. You can see it here, kind of light in color. And finally, up top, it's the A horizon, or the topsoil, if you will. It's darker in color and home to the humus, a dark, rich, gooey stuff that's born from the death of plants and animals. This humus mixes with minerals to form the rich soil that nourishes the plants that grow here on sweet mother earth. Well, thanks for the tour. I hope you have a very successful hole or whatever it is. <laughs> sure thing, son. Now, hand me down that board. Got to shore her up while I'm working. And if you're ever needing a hole dug the proper way, why, you just call McTavish. Thanks again, and good luck. Oh, luck has nothing to do with it. It's a skill, like my daddy had, and his daddy, and his daddy, and before that, some other daddy. Okay, one tablespoon of soil, here's what's in it. About 2.5 million bacteria, 400,000 bits of fungus, 50,000 algae, 30,000 protozoa, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Mmm, now that's good eating. Interesting guy. <laughs> yeah, they have places for people like that. <laughs> I thought he was cute, and he knew his soil. Did you see how much life there was in that top layer of soil? I saw some worms, some bugs, but mostly just dirt. Dirt is just soil out of place. <laughs> All right, enough with that stuff already, man. I get it. Soil is important. So I'm supposed to go back and tell my class that soil is alive. Well, alive with what? Well, let's find out. Have you ever heard of a bioassay? the amount of life that exists right under our feet. And that's just the stuff you can see. Healthy soil literally teems with millions of plants and animals all working together as a system. Now I get it. It's alive. It is alive. In many ways, it's like a living organism, a single complex organism with a variety of parts. And everything on Earth passes through this living land organism at one point or another. Everything? Everything. Even you, Jeff. <laughs> Dennis! Yeah. Hey, we've been John. tramping around out in cow patties all afternoon looking for you. This is my friends. We were just Hi. talking about soil and wanted to know maybe if you could tell us something about soil formation. Okay, well, if we're going to look at soil formation and how we got to where we are today, we're going to have to go back to the beginning of the Earth. And what we had at the beginning of the Earth's history is rock. Through the processes of wind decomposition and water decomposition, we, we got an accumulation of smaller and smaller particles of rock and soil. This accumulation actually allowed plants to establish their roots in it, and they grew and they died, and that, that allowed organic matter to be accumulated in this broken down rock. This process of life and birth, death, decay, life and birth, death, decay, has gone on over and over and over and over throughout our entire history, and our soil has increased in depth over that time to a where we are at today. 
And in soil science, we talk about five different factors in soil formation. The first is parent material. And I talked about how we began with rocks. In Missouri, we have several different types of rocks right here that form different types of soils. We also have material that's been moved by gravity, which is called colluvium. We have stream deposited materials, which is called alluvium. And we have lus. Well, wait, 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 what's lus? <laughs> lus, lus is a wind blowing material. And actually what it is is small soil particles that have been picked up by the wind from one area and deposited in another. So that's where you start with parent material. And then you have the effect of climate. And basically what happens is you get differences in the amount of rainfall that you have over a year's time. You get differences in the temperature that you have over a year's time. And vegetation is the third factor that we talk about. So we have different plants. And one, one example is just the differences that you see in soil development under a prairie vegetation and under timber vegetation. So under prairie vegetation, what we expect to find is a, is a deep, dark surface developed. Where under timber vegetation, what you get is a, a lighter colored surface that's relatively thin. Well, landscape is the fourth factor that we talk about in soil development. And when I talk about landscape, it's like when you look at the horizon and you see the different levels as you go across the horizon. And in soil science, we break the landscape into land forms. And those are small segments of the landscape that have different activities going on there that affect soil development. Time is the fifth factor, and you may ask yourself, what does time have to do with soil development? But time is very important because it gives control to the other factors. It's how much time do the other factors have to act on a particular area to form a particular soil. And this whole interaction of these five factors has continued, or is beginning now, on each soil and will continue to, to do so until a soil profile is formed. And this soil has developed over the entire Earth's surface. And this small mantle, which varies in thickness all over the Earth, is what supports us and all we do. I don't get it. If we've got all these factors and decay and stuff to make more soil, then what do we need to worry about conservation for? Man, is this guy thick or something? You think he's getting any of this? I don't know. Let's review. Soil is alive. It's made up of tiny bits of rock and millions of living things. Soil is deposited in layers called horizons. The top layer, called the topsoil, is where all the good stuff is. That's where all the plants grow. Many different factors affect soil formation, like parent material, climate, time, vegetation, and landscape. Soil is important! Yeah, like without it, there would be no life. Imagine a life without worms, even. A single raindrop can be a powerful destructive force. Falling at 15 miles per hour, it explodes like a bomb when it strikes unprotected land, lifting minute particles of soil off the surface and carrying them away. The results of this erosion worldwide are staggering. It is estimated that the net loss to erosion is 25.4 billion tons every year we don't have this much soil to lose. This program describes how to save the soil. Oh, hi, Jeff. Carrie, hey, I wanted to thank you for that tour this weekend. I learned so much about soil. <laughs> well, you did get quite a shovel full of facts, didn't you? Hey, how's your sixth grade class? Well, it's going pretty good. I gave them all the information about how soil is a really important environmental issue. Mm. Um. What's with the films? Oh, these are just uh, the old movies that I was going to show them. I guess they're probably pretty lame. Well, I wouldn't be too hasty. You know, some of these are classics. Have you viewed them yet? Well, no, the old projector is down again. You know any place where we can watch them? I've got just the place. Come on. High winds and sun. High winds and sun. Settler, plow at your peril. I called John. Oh, the soil science guy. Yeah, I thought he might want to take a look at these. Yeah, good idea. He's a nice guy. I really like that Jeep that he has. He gets a little uh, theatrical about the soil science stuff, though. Wow, what a great place. 
What's on the bill? A bunch of old films about soil that I found. Is the plow that broke the planes in there? Right behind you. Cool. Mega classic film. It's 1936. The end of the Great Depression with the New Deal in place. Filmmaker Per Lorenz sets out on the Great Plains to record the epic saga of the Dust Bowl. Uh, see what I mean about theatrical? So uh, what's a Dust Bowl anyway? Well, to understand Lorenz's perspective, you've got to know a little bit about the 30s and just how serious soil erosion had become. The Dust Bowl was a five-year drought that decimated the midsection of our country. Not only were many crops destroyed, but the very fabric of life in the Midwest was beginning to unravel because of soil erosion. Oh, come on. Really? Between May 9th and 12th, 1934, the most massive dust storm in history swept out of the drought-stricken plains. Airplane flights out of Chicago had to be canceled. Street lights were on in midday. The dust storm didn't settle until it was well out over the Atlantic Ocean. The Associated Press estimated 300 million tons of topsoil were removed from American farms. And that's just one storm in a five-year drought. But we solved that problem, right? I don't know. It, it's different. Maybe not so, so visual. But, it, but in some ways, we're losing more soil today than we were back in the 1930s. I thought the government takes care of that stuff. There are a lot of good people who work very hard in the battle for the soil. It's a tough fight. You know, I got a friend that works for the Missouri Department of Natural Resources that you got to meet. OK, OK, tell him about Bennett. Tell him about Bennett, please. All right, one more time. The first head of the Soil Conservation Service back in the 30s was a young scientist named Hugh Hammond Bennett. Very dedicated guy, really did a lot to help preserve our soil. Of course, he's always fighting with Congress to convince them of the seriousness of the soil erosion problem. Well, it just so happened that he was working with Congress on March 6, 1935, the day the second major dust storm swept across the country and into Washington, D.C. So, of course, Bennett, he's a smart guy. He's got people all across the country tracking the storm. He knows the time it will reach Washington to the minute. As he's speaking to Congress, he casually mentions that they need to close the shutters at 2.45 p.m. because they were about to be visited by the very problem they were currently discussing. Needless to say, as the wind howled outside and the dust settled around their desks, the skeptical congressman began to listen a lot more carefully to Mr. Bennett. Yeah. Hey, John. Hey, Alice. Guys, this is Alice Keller. She's a soil scientist. How are you doing? Glad to meet you. This is Jeff and this is Carrie. Glad to meet you. So, Alice, can you tell these guys about soil erosion? Okay. Um, well, first of all, erosion is a natural process. It's something that's been going on for thousands of years. The erosion that uh, we talk about now and that we're worried about is one that was accelerated by man. There's a lot more of it going on because of our activities. When uh, people first settled here in the Midwest, there was a lot of grasses and trees and such that was covering the soil and protecting it and then we plowed it all up and planted crops and that left the soil bare and a lot of it eroded away so that's the problem that we're worried about. Is you need to understand the different types of soil erosion that there are. We call, there's three different areas that we call it or three different types. The first one is called sheet erosion and that's like a sheet of paper. It's on land that's not very steep and the whole sheet of soil will just wash away. And there's another type called rill erosion, and that's when little ditches that are maybe a couple inches deep, they form, and the soil is carried away through those. And then you have gully erosion, and that's the really big stuff that you see on the movies a lot of times. It's, they can be a couple of feet deep or up, uh, up to 100 feet deep, and those are the big ditches that soil has been washed out of. Basically, when you're trying to control erosions, there's two things that you're trying to do. You're either trying to protect the soil so it's not sitting there bare, or you're trying to slow the water down because the faster water moves, the more soil it can carry away. So you keep the soil covered by keeping like, grass on it or your trees or litter left over after you cut the crop off, the, like the wheat stubble, or you slow the water down by building things like terraces or contour grassways to slow the water down so it's not moving as quickly off the field. So if farmers would just practice contouring and terracing, would mm -hmm. that solve the problem? Well, it's been a good start. Um, we've done a lot with that, but the problem keeps growing. All across the world, um, the population is growing, and people are using more and more soils or more and more land that really wasn't meant for farming, or it's not that good for farming, or it's very steep. So we know a lot about how to control it, but the problem keeps growing and we keep losing more soil. 
How do you get people to do that? How do you get them to understand how important that is? Well, education, you know, what you guys are doing with your students. Um, the other thing is it, it's our own land, our own ethics. Everybody is responsible for what goes on on the land. And we all have to have the ethics to be wanting to conserve that and to be concerned about it. Uh, it may be helpful for, for you to talk to a farmer or somebody who's maybe changed some of their ethics and how they've dealt with the land to find out what people are doing. Soil erosion affects 74 million tons of soil in Missouri each year. If you take one year's worth of eroded soil back from the ditches, ponds, rivers, and streams that catch it, you could bury all four lanes of Interstate 70 from St. Louis to Kansas City with 25 feet of soil. That's as tall as two and a half basketball goals piled on top of each other. That's a lot of soil. Soil conservation is extremely important to me because I'm farming some of that ground and my parents and my grandparents and my great-grandparents had to practice soil conservation. I can remember my grandfather always said, when I was a young person, he always talked about being a good steward. And when he talked about being a good steward, he talked about being a good steward of the soil. Originally, a lot of the ground was farmed more or less up and down the, the hill without concern as to how much would erode. And of course, the more you go straight up and down the hill, the more the water's going to rush off in a hurry. And that's the reason you, you we're doing these things. It's to slow the speed of the water as it, as it runs down the hill and not to carry soil with it. Before terraces, we planted on the contour, which meant going around the hill to keep it level as you went around the hill. Then we developed terracing, which are mounds of dirt that go around the hill. And it forces that water to, to go around that channel. So it's slowed it down. So the next generation we have is this conservation tillage with these tools that we have, where again, it's essential that we go around the hill. You see, all this vegetation is gonna be on top of the ground. And all that's gonna absorb the droplets as they hit. That's one of the things, is when the rain pounds down on it. So this vegetation will stop it. See, we've made a lot of progress. That's, that's my point. But we're gonna make a lot more. Give us the opportunity. Only 2% of people in the U.S. are farmers. Yet each farmer feeds 92 people here in the States and 22 people overseas. Wow, that's a lot of bread. That takes a lot of soil. I'll tell you what, I'm never going to look at dirt the same way again. Soil. soil. I know, I was just testing to see if you guys were on top of it. But really, it is different when you look at land as, as a living thing. It just makes you feel more... Responsible? Yeah, yeah. It's like I don't even want to walk on it now. <laughs> this was the guy whose most profound line to his class was, Dirt is good. <laughs> <laughs> to be the people of the world, someone's got to take care of soil. Yeah, us. Every single one of us. Think of the soil on the earth as a thin film, a membrane, through which all life passes. Everything that has ever lived or that will ever live is present in the soil. What can each of us do to protect this vital resource? What can we do to save the soil? Hi. I guess you've probably figured out by now that I'm not really a teacher. I'm actually Chris Lazaro. I'm an actor, and like yourselves, I'm a student. One thing I have in common with Jeff Jenner, the teacher, though, is that before we started making this video, I knew nothing about soil. I have learned so much doing this that now I don't understand why I haven't heard more about it. I mean, I see on TV about recycling and saving endangered species, and, and those things are important. But so is soil conservation. I see now that soil is alive. It's just like a, a bird or a tree. It's got parts and functions that all interrelate. In this next part of the video, we're going to be talking about the future, and that means talking about you. Down the hall here, we've got the sixth grade class from Gentry Middle School. 
we're going to be talking to them about soil and get some help from the two soil scientists we talked to earlier in the video. Now they're the real thing. Thanks. Well, I see that everybody already is here waiting for me. Hey, everybody, how are you doing today? My name is Chris Lazaro. I know that you know we're all here to talk about soil today. And well, Alice, let's start with, uh, I guess, the general question. Why is soil conservation important? Well, first of all, I think you have to look at why soil is important to all of us. Soil is common all over the earth. We only have so much of it. And it's important for us to keep that soil so that we keep our productivity and keep the life that we want to keep for ourselves and for our kids. To do that, we have to conserve soil. We have to use it wisely so that we do have something to pass on. And there's a lot of ways to do that. And we're here today to talk about soils and soil science, what that means to you, and what soil conservation means. And part of the thing I want to hear from you all is what you think and know and the questions that you've got. Like, when I was, like, younger, maybe, like, five or six, I heard, like, like earthworms, like, help the soil somehow, so, like, you can buy some earthworms. That's good. That's good. How do, how do earthworms help the soil? Well, earthworms help the soil two ways. Or earthworms, as they're eaten away, they make little tunnels in the soil, so that, that makes the soil easier for the roots to grow in. And earthworms also have manure, just like cows, <laughs> and they have a lot of it, believe it or not. And it's another, form of, it's another form of organic matter. How does manure help make better soil? That's a good question. Dennis. Manure is actually <laughs> organic matter. We've talked about organic matter before. As plants and animals decay, they, they form organic matter. Manure is just another source of organic matter. And as you increase the organic matter in the soil, what you do is you improve the amount of water that the soil can hold. You also increase the amount of nutrients that a soil can hold, so you can supply a plant with more nutrients. How can we make soil better? There's a lot of things in how, how you decide to live, you know, like um, if you decide to build a house, you know, trying to be careful not to tear apart too much soil when you build that house. When you, um, if you want to compost, you know, returning the, the, or the nutrients back to the earth. Um, supporting soil conservation in the state, you know, being knowing about it and knowing when people ask you, hey, is this worth anything? You can say, yes, it's worth a lot. Who can give me another example of, a, of an environmental issue and, and how it relates to soil? Saving the whales, rainforests, the ozone layer, endangered species. What do all those other issues have in common? Isn't it, isn't it the soil? Everything's interrelated. You can't do one thing in the earth and not have it affect something else. It just, we're all connected. And so that's why it's so important to be careful with what we do with everything. Well, it's kind of a chain reaction because if we lose the soil, then we're, the plants can't grow in it and then the animals won't have anything to eat, maybe. So it's kind of a chain reaction. If we lose one thing, then we lose more. Probably your teachers have given you or used the term in your class of an ecosystem. The soil is just one factor in the ecosystem. And what Alex was saying is that if you have an effect or you do something to the soil in one area, it can have an effect in other areas, such as on trees and whales. How deep in the state of Missouri do you think the layer of soil is, covering the whole, covering, covering the whole outer surface? How far down do you think the soil layer goes? Maybe a few thousand feet, 200 feet or something, about a mile. And the answer is, Dennis? The soil depth across the state of Missouri varies considerably. You can have as much as two to 300 foot of soil some of the other areas of Ozarks, you might only have four inches of soil or one inch of soil over bedrock. So it varies considerably depending on the type of rock that you're dealing with, what geology, and what area of the state you're in. A lot of times when, when people that work in environmental fields like ourselves, uh, when you really get to thinking what's, what are the, the hardest problems we're facing today, they come down to the, the, the resources that we don't have an infinite amount of. And soil is one of them. Water is another one. If we don't take care of those basic resources that we have, you can't make more. I want to thank you all very much. We are, we're just about out of time, but you guys have been great. This is one smart group of kids. I want to thank also Alice and Dennis, and uh, let's give everyone a hand. Good, I'm glad we got a part in this section. I was afraid they were going to forget us. Oh no, look what's happening in the background. Ah! Ah!